Hi everyone, this is Maverick Pond, the Chemistry Guru. Now in this video, we want to discuss the relationship between a rate equation and the reaction mechanism. Now in general, when we have a balanced equation, what we have is the overall equation where we look at what are the species that are present at the beginning of the reaction and what are the species that are formed at the end of the reaction. It doesn't really tell us what is going on during this reaction. So the reaction mechanism is made up of all these elementary steps that talks about in detail what is going on during this reaction. So it helps in the understanding of the reaction. Now what is interesting is the reaction mechanism is actually related to the rate equation because inside all these elementary steps, one of these steps is the slower step. And so therefore you determine the rate of the entire reaction. We call this the slow step or the rate determining step. And when we measure the kinetics of this reaction, or when we measure the rate of this reaction, we are actually measuring the rate of the slower step or the rate determining step. Because the rate of the slow step will be the bottleneck, so therefore it will affect the rate of the entire reaction. So what we can do is, based on the rate equation and the order of the reaction, we can link it directly to something in the rate determining step. So for example, if I look at this rate equation here, rate is equals to a rate constant k, multiplied by concentration of A power 1 and multiplied by concentration of B power 2, then the order of the reaction with respect to A is order 1. The order of the reaction with respect to B is order 2. So what this rate equation is telling me is the number of A involved in the rate determining step is equal to 1 and the number of B involved in the rate determining step is equal to 2. So what I can do is I can write out this part of the rate determining step, which is the reactant, so I know that A plus 2B will give me some intermediates inside this mechanism and we know that this will be the slow step or the rate determining step. Now, what we want to keep in mind is the rate equation tells me the number of species that's involved in the rate determining step and there are some limitations to it. First thing is, it doesn't tell me what are the products that are being formed in the rate determining step. Second thing is, it doesn't tell me whether this slow step is in the first step or the second step or the third step of the reaction mechanism. Third thing is, it doesn't tell me in total how many steps are there inside this mechanism. It can be a two-step reaction, three-step reaction, four-step reaction, but the rate equation doesn't give us that information. It only tells us what are the number of species that is involved in the rate determining step or inside this slow step. All right, let's have two examples to try to illustrate the relationship between the rate equation and the reaction mechanism. If given the mechanism for this particular reaction, we want to determine the rate equation based on this mechanism. So we have two steps, x plus y to give p, and given this is the slow step, second step, p plus y equals to z, and this is the fast step. So first thing we can do is we can work out the overall reaction, which is fairly straightforward. I just need to add up the two equations and I see whether there are terms on both sides that we can cancel. So you notice X is not formed on the right-hand side. So X is a reactant. I can keep X. X will be here. Y, on the left-hand side, I have two Ys. Right-hand side, there's no Y. So Y is a reactant. So therefore, I know that I have two Y as a reactant. Now P, you notice I have one P on the right-hand side, which is formed in the first step and it is being used up in the second step. So P actually appears on both sides of the equation. It is an intermediate, so therefore I will cancel it away. It doesn't appear in the overall equation. Then finally, we have Z. Z is formed in the second step, but it is not found on the left-hand side of the equation. So therefore we know that Z is the product. So I know that this term will give us one Z. So this is the overall equation. Now the next thing is the rate determining step is tied directly to the rate equation. So whenever we want to write out the rate equation, we only focus on the slow step. And the fast step that is after the slow step, in general, we don't really need to look at it when we want to determine the rate equation. So if I look at the slow step, inside this slow step, I have one X involved and I have one Y involved. So we know that it will be first order with respect to X, first order with respect to Y. So very simple, I can just write out this rate equation, rate equals to a rate constant k, concentration of x, power 1, because inside the rate determining step, there's only one x, and concentration of y, power 1, because again, there's only one y involved in the rate determining step. The next thing we will need to do is, you need to make sure that the concentration of all these terms are 
either the reactants or the catalyst involved. So if I look at this term, x is a reactant, y is also a reactant. So therefore, I can keep this rate equation. The rate equation for this mechanism will be rate equals to k, concentration of x power 1, and concentration of y power 1. Now let's have another example. How about this mechanism instead? Same thing, what we want to do is I want to determine the rate equation for this mechanism. Now what I have is a plus b to give me ab. The first step is the first step. Then ab plus b to give me ab2. The second step is the slow step. What is different in this case is the second step is slow. The previous exercise, the first step is slow. And first thing, of course, what we have to do is we have to write out the overall equation. So let me try to do that first. First thing, A is on the left-hand side. It doesn't appear on the right-hand side, so A is a reactant. You can keep it. B, I have two Bs on the left-hand side of the equation. There are no Bs on the right-hand side, so B is a reactant. So 2B is the reactant. Now AB appears in the first step, form in the first step, use up in the second step, so therefore it is an intermediate. It doesn't appear in the overall equation, so AB, we will leave it out. Then finally, AB2 is formed in the second step. It doesn't appear on the left-hand side, so AB2 is the product. I know that I can get AB2 as the product, then this will be the overall equation. Same thing when we want to determine the red equation, what we focus on is only the slow step. So based on this slow step, what we have is I have one AB involved, first order with respect to AB, one B involved, first order with respect to B. So I can first write out this rate equation, rate equals to a rate constant K, concentration of AB, power 1, because there's only one AB in the slow step, then concentration of B, power 1, because there's only one B in the slow step. So the rate equation at the beginning will look like this, based on the slow step. But what we notice is something interesting. If I look at the terms inside this rate equation, you notice we have AB, which actually doesn't appear as the reactant because it is an intermediate. Now, when we write out rate equation, we don't write out the rate equation in terms of intermediates. We only write it in terms of reactants or sometimes catalysts that is involved in the reaction. So in this case, what I'll have to do is I'll have to do something about AB. I need to modify AB in terms of the reactant or catalyst that forms this AB. So we will deal with it in a while. Concentration of B I can keep because B is a reactant. It appears in the overall equation. Now back to AB, how do I handle this AB is, as mentioned, it is an intermediate. So I don't write out the rate equation in terms of this intermediate. I'll have to look out for the step that forms this intermediate and I write it in terms of the reactant that forms the intermediate. So second step is slow. AB is involved in the second step. And we have to look out for the step that's above this slow step and where this AB is formed. AB is formed inside this first step. So what we have to do is I have to modify AB in terms of the reactant that forms this AB. Now AB is formed from 1A and 1B. So I can write it in terms of first order with respect to A because I have 1A involved. First order with respect to B because there's 1B involved. So I can rewrite this rate equation as rate equals to K concentration of A and concentration of B. Now remember this concentration of A and concentration of B comes from the first step because AB is formed in this first step. So what I'm doing is I'm rewriting the intermediate in terms of the reactant that forms this intermediate in the first step. Then this concentration of B is a remainder, so therefore I'll just have to bring it over. Then after that, it is an issue of simplification. I have one A involved, I have two B terms involved, so I can combine these two terms as a B square term. So therefore the rate equation will be a K, concentration of A, power one, and concentration of B square. So overall this rate equation will be first order with respect to A, second order with respect to B. All right, I hope that this discussion will help us better understand the relationship between the reaction mechanism and rate equations. If you learned something useful from this video, please give me the thumbs up, like this video, and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more weekly video lessons. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.